This podcast is on the evolution of population, so please write that as a heading in your notebook with today's date. First, I want to go over a common misconception or misunderstanding that people often have about um, evolution and natural selection in general. And you don't have to write this down, but we just want to make sure we're starting from the you know, correct place here. And that common misconception is that organisms can evolve during their lifetimes. Now, there's a couple things wrong with that. First of all, a single organism doesn't evolve. And secondly, evolution takes longer than one lifetime. So let's get to the correction for this, and this I would like you to write down, this, this statement that comes next. Uh, number one, natural selection acts on individuals. So certain individuals, as we talked with natural selection before, will survive or not survive depending on the traits they have. So natural selection will determine whether or not an individual survives or not. But it's only the whole population of individuals that actually evolves. Okay, so a particular individual cannot evolve. It's the population, the group of organisms of the same species that actually evolves or changes over time. And what actually causes that evolution to happen is, again, those genetic variations in populations. So within a population, you have lots of different types of traits, and those traits will come and go depending on what the environment favors. So that population will change according to the environment, according to what helps organisms survive and what causes them to die. Okay, and then a couple definitions before we really get into this about um, what we're going to be delving into here. First of all, I've used population a couple of times, but just to make sure we're all on the same page here, you want to probably write this down. A population is a group of individuals in one area that are capable of producing fertile offspring. So usually that means they're all of the same species. That's kind of how we define a species, is a group of organisms that can reproduce with each other. So population is a group of organisms in one area of the same species. Another word that's going to come up once in a while in this um, podcast is the word gene pool or the uh, phrase gene pool. A gene pool is the total of all genes in a population at any one time. So we collect the genes from you know, a whole group of grasshoppers and put them all together in a bowl, throw all the genes in. That would be the gene pool. So the genes from all the different grasshoppers, again, they would be different because grasshoppers are different from each other. But we throw them together into a bowl, and we call that the gene pool. OK, so to start looking at how populations actually evolve or change over time, we need to start by looking at what happens when they aren't changing, okay? when no evolution is taking place. And that's what we are going to be uh, looking at with this Hardy-Weinberg principle. Uh, it's named after the last names of a couple scientists who worked out this idea, uh, last names Hardy and Weinberg. And basically they said that populations will maintain an allylic equilibrium when certain things happen. So let's break this down what this means first of all. Maintain an allylic equilibrium. Allylic refers to alleles. And so hopefully you remember from when we did genetics in the past, alleles are the different forms of a gene. For example, you might have a dominant allele and a recessive allele, or you might have two recessive alleles. Okay, so if we look at the gene pool, and we're looking to see if the alleles are in equilibrium, that means the alleles, the types of genes that are in that population year after year after year after year, stay the same. Okay, equilibrium means staying the same. So if they're staying the same, there is no evolution in that population. So basically we're saying populations will, will not evolve. Okay, so their genetic equilibrium will not change when certain things occur. First of those is if we don't have any immigration or emigration into or out of the population. So if no new genes are coming in, no new genes are going out, that's going to keep our equilibrium stable. Again, this would mean we're talking about here, you know, new organisms coming in, um, a deer from another herd uh, joining a second herd or something like that. So if that does not happen, we're going to maintain equilibrium. Number two, mating has to be random. So there is no particular characteristic that is making some organisms mate more with others. Okay, there is no um, you know, bird call or particular physical feature that's making females or males choose one over the other. OK, 
Okay, so we need that random mix of genes to happen in order to maintain equilibrium. Thirdly, we need to have a large population. When we're looking at small populations, random changes in allelic frequencies can happen pretty easily, actually. And we'll talk more about that uh, in a different podcast. But if you have a large population, there's still lots of mixing, which means that equilibrium is easier to maintain. No mutations. Uh, as you know, the source of a lot of genetic diversity, a lot of changes in the DNA, comes from those spontaneous mutations that we all carry around with us. So um, those mutations might exist, but we don't want mutations that are going to be favored or disfavored in the population if we're trying to maintain equilibrium. If a new mutation would come up that would help an organism survive, that would upset our genetic equilibrium. So this doesn't just mean no mutations, it just means no mutations that are either harmful or favorable for any particular organism. And then finally, there can't be any natural selection. Okay, we talked about natural selection in the last uh, vodcast, and we know that natural selection does change populations. Right Over time, the types of traits that we see in that population are going to change if natural selection is taking place. So if all five of these things exist, okay, the genes in a population are going to stay basically in the same ratio, same amount of recessive to dominant alleles, and that will maintain that population over time so that there's no evolution. So again, key idea here is that if these five things exist, the population is not evolving. So that's the basis of the Hardy-Weinberg principle, is what happens when things are stable.